Hi, I'm Mark Iskowitz, Editor-in-Chief at mm and &M, and I'm sitting here with Stephen Neal, who's Executive Vice President and Chief Creative Officer at Abelson Taylor. Welcome, Stephen. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mark. Uh, how are agencies and drug makers evolving uh, their use of DTC, both creatively and uh, in shows and media, and still staying within the regulations? You know, as the population of those individuals who are on very digital or on all the social sites get older, get, uh, you know, in, in need of more of those kind of mass, you know, marketed uh, therapies, um, I think we're going to start to see, you know, DTC switch from broadcast, kind of what we, we think of as traditional broadcast, to more of uh, going to places where those consumers are. I think for some of the therapies that are aimed more at the, the younger population, whether it be birth control, acne, uh, depression medications, those things, I think they're already going to those places where, mm -hmm. where those consumers are. Mm -hmm. So the much heralded uh, tipping point in DTC may be upon us. Yeah, uh, I think. Soon. Yeah, hopefully, you know, <laughs> hopefully, I, you know, I just feel like uh, in terms of advertising agencies, I think there, you know, there's a little bit more for us to play with uh, in those in those channels uh, than typical broadcasts. Uh, sure. the, the the regulations in terms of uh, broadcast are so very specific and so limiting. When will we see uh, drug makers start um, advertising and appealing more toward the millennials? When those people become sick enough or the people that they're caring for become you know, sick enough on a, on a mass market level uh, to command that attention in those dollars. It's easier to track ROI on broadcast um, than, than perhaps a lot of these digital channels. Mm -hmm. um, and so maybe that's a reason too. Um, I think brand directors when they're talking to their bosses, need to be able to justify the expense of why they're they're putting mu so much money behind certain media. Sure. Speaking speaking of that, what are some of the ways that drug makers uh, can integrate DTC into their overall marketing campaigns, specifically digital? So chatbot is is like a big thing right now, mm -hmm. just because of the popularity of texting, the fact that it's easier to negotiate the medical regulatory environment or mm -hmm. uh, FDA environment because. You can control the dialogue a little bit. It's simple, you know, pulsing out questions to, to consumers that give you very limited in terms of what to answer, but it's, mm -hmm. it's a very efficient, better way for brands to engage with, uh, with consumers. Now, what other kinds of DTC creative tactics are you seeing now more than, than, than before in terms of speaking less fun about functional benefits, more making that emotional connection, storytelling, et cetera? Yeah, I think storytelling's a big, uh, what I'd call kind of, um, kind of long form content, video content, sponsored content, things like that, I think are, mm -hmm. are starting to get a little bit more popular. And because OPDP isn't used to reviewing that type of content and thinking out, the, the, the rules seem a little bit more, I guess, undefined. And maybe um, focusing on the simple messages. It still has to be provocative enough to kind of grab their interest and get them to pay attention to it. Right. Just really resonate with them, you know, on an emotional level. Mm -hmm.